So at point three is scale diagrams. So our goal for this section is to understand and use scale diagrams involving two-dimensional shapes. So the explorer, let's see here, construct a scale drawing that models an airplane flying north 20 degrees east at 160 kilometers per hour for 2.5 hours. So first we need to see, well, what is 160 kilometers per hour for 2.5 hours? How far did he travel in two and a half hours? So let's do that. So the distance traveled by the airplane will be equal to 120 kilometers per hour times 2.5 hours. So our hours will cancel, which works out to 400 kilometers. So the airplane traveled 400 kilometers. Next, we need to figure out a scale to use so that we can represent 400 kilometers on our little piece of paper. So, if we choose 1 centimeter to 50 kilometers, let's use that. So then let's calculate the length we'll need on our paper for f to represent 400 kilometers. So we have 400 kilometers times 1 centimeter to 50 kilometers equals 8 centimeters. So the line on our piece of paper will be 8 centimeters long. So we're traveling 400 kilometers in a direction that is north 20 degrees east. So to find north 20 degrees east, I start off at north and I go 20 degrees towards the east. So my line should be here. Now I know my line needs to be 8 centimeters long, so I'm using my handy dandy ruler and I'm going to make my line that is 8 centimeters long. Well, it works out it's in the middle of my text, but that's okay. So now I have my 8 centimeter long line, which is representing 160 kilometers an hour for two and a half hours. So this is my scale drawing. So now we're going to review how to find scale factor. So the diameter of the animal cell that is represented by this scale diagram is actually 0.25 millimeters. So the diameter from one side to the all the way to the other at the center point is, two point, is 0.25 millimeters actually. So what scale factor was used to draw the scale diagram? So if you remember, the scale diagram, sorry, the scale factor is uh, the diagram measurement over the actual measurement. So let's try to find that. Usually we use K to represent the scale factor. So the diagram measurement in this case, let's put them both as millimeters, because if you remember, our scale factor has to have the same units on the top and the bottom, because it's a ratio, not a rate. So K has 35 millimeters. K is equal to 35 millimeters over 0.25 millimeters, which works out to a scale factor of 3,500 over 25, or 140 to 1. Let's think for a second. Does this make sense? So we're taking our actual measurement, 0.25 millimeters, and we want to make it bigger so that we can actually see it in the real world. So if we multiply a number by a number greater than 1, it's going to make it bigger than itself. So if we have, say, 4, and we multiply it by 5, we're going to get 20, which is bigger than 4. So it makes sense that we're multiplying by a number greater than 1. So then this makes sense for the scale factor for our scale diagram. All right, let's apply the math and draw a scale diagram that involves a reduction. So that means that we're going to be making it smaller. So a builder plans to construct a house on a rectangular lot as shown in this sketch. The sketch is not a scale diagram. We're going to be drawing a scale diagram of the lot and the house using a scale of 1 meter to 500 meters, or a scale of 1 over 500. So let's find our lot and house dimensions as they're going to be on our actual piece of paper. So the lot length here is 40 meters. We're going to be multiplying that by a scale di uh, by a scale factor, sorry, of 1 meter to 500 meters. So 40 times 1 to 500 works out to 0 0.08 meters. This makes sense. For the lot width, we have 15 meters. We're going to be multiplying it by our scale factor k which is 1 over 500. So 15 times 1 over 500 works out 2.03 meters. Now our house dimensions, we have a house length of 12 meters. Multiply that by our scale factor to get 
0.024 meters and our house width is 9 meters times 1 over 500 works out to 0 0.018 meters. So now you know the dimensions of both the lot and the house, but this isn't all we need. We need to somehow figure out what our insets are going to be as well on our scale diagram to figure out how far away we need to put the house from the edges of the lot. So to do this, we have the insets from the left and from the front of the lot given. So we have 4.5 meters and 2.2 2 meters. So we multiply 4.5 meters, which is our front inset, by our scale factor to get that our front inset is 0 0.009 meters. Do the same with our left inset of 2 meters, multiply that by our scale factor k of 1 over 500, which works out to a left inset of 0 0.004 meters. So now we have our links, all of our widths, and all of our insets in meters. But this makes no sense because we're going to be drawing with the centimeter ruler, so let's convert all of these to centimeters. So our lot length then we had was 0 0.08 meters times 100 centimeters in a meter, works out to 8 centimeters. Similarly, our lot width, if we multiply this by 100 centimeters in 1 meter, we get 3 centimeters. Our house length, we get 2.4 centimeters. Our house width, we get 1.8 centimeters. And our insets, we can do this the exact same way. Take what we had for our inset, 0 0.009 meters times 100 centimeters in 1 meter, and we get our front inset to be 0.9 centimeters. Our left inset, we can do this similarly to get that to be 0.4 centimeters. So now I'm actually going to draw my scale diagram. And I'm going to start off by drawing my lot. So I know that my lot is supposed to be 8 centimeters long and 3 centimeters wide. So let's start with that. So I draw 8 centimeters long and 3 centimeters wide. And now I'm going to close my rectangle. So now I'm going to decide what the front of my lot is going to be. I'm going to make the front this side at the bottom. So now I need to label my insets first because I need to know how far away from the edges of my lot my house is going to be. So my front inset is 0.9 centimeters, so I'm going to draw a dot at 0.9 centimeters. And my left inset is 0.4 centimeters, so I'm going to draw a dot there as well, so 0.4. So now the whole goal of trying to figure out where my insets were was to make one of my points on my house. So one of my corners. So if I line up my ruler with my front inset and my left inset, I get that one of my corners on my house is going to be right here. So now I'm going to erase these dots because I know where my corner is. So now I know my house is going to be 2.4 centimeters long. So if we look back up at our sketch, the long edge is facing the front. So this is going to be 2.4 centimeters. So I move my ruler up here and I draw my line that is 2.4 centimeters. So now I've drawn my line that's 2.4 centimeters and now my house width is 1.8 centimeters. So if we turn our ruler, we can draw a line that's 1.8 centimeters. So now I have my line that's 1.8 centimeters long. From here I can just close my rectangle and that is going to be my house in scale diagram fashion. So because this is a scale diagram, I also need to label all of my dimensions. So like I need to label that my house width is 1.8 centimeters, that my house length is 2.4 centimeters, that my lot length is 8 centimeters, and my lot width is three centimeters, I also need to label my insets. So anything I did a calculation for, basically I need to label it. So after all of my labeling is done, this is what my scale diagram looks like. And that is how we draw a scale diagram. So in summary, our key ideas. Scale diagrams are used to represent real, actual 2D shapes. To create a scale diagram, you must determine an appropriate scale to use, which depends on the dimensions of the original shape and the size of the diagram that is required. So the scale factor represents the ratio, it's not a rate, so we don't have any units, it's just a ratio, of a distance measurement of a shape to the corresponding distance measurement of a similar shape, where both measurements are expressed using the same units. We need to know that we can multiply any linear dimension of a shape by a scale factor to calculate the corresponding dimension of a similar shape. When determining the scale factor, 
it's k is equal to the diagram measurement over the actual measurement. When a scale factor is between 0 and 1, the new shape is a reduction of the original shape. So imagine you have 4 and you're multiplying it by 1 half, it's 2. 2 is less than 4, so it's a reduction. When a scale factor is greater than 1, the new shape is an enlargement of the original shape. So imagine we have 4 and we're multiplying it by 2. We get 8, and 8 is bigger than 4, so it's an enlargement. We can't have a scale factor that's negative, because you can't draw a negative line. Because drawing a negative line when you're drawing an actual shape doesn't make sense.